when we talk about the dynamics of moving, exercise, even massage, we talk about it in terms of planes. I'd like you to imagine this blue block running through your body as we begin these exercises. Okay, so you saw the photos of the different planes before we started. Now remember, you've got yourself in that plane. The frontal plane would be the one that runs here. So I'm going to stand sideways. Anything that is moving in this direction here is going to be on the frontal plane. That means if I move my arms straight like this, I'm going to turn just a little bit, straight like this, all the way up over my head, bending them like this, staying in this plane right here. I'm in the frontal plane. If I take my leg out to the side, whether I bend it, keep it straight, take both of them side to side, maybe moving, I'm moving in that same plane. So I'm moving side to side, I'm staying in this plane right here. If I wanted to take my torso in the plane, I would tip side to side like this. And if I wanted to do my head, I would just tip my head side to side, staying in the frontal plane. Take a moment to imagine the blue block running through your body. The sagittal plane would be the one that's running straight through you like this. That means it doesn't have, the arms don't have to be here, but if they're moving forward and back like this, that means that they're moving in the sagittal plane. And you can move your arms straight. You can move your arms one at a time. You can bend them, bringing them up and down. And you're still in the sagittal plane. The legs would be forward and back, as though you were walking. And so if you're walking along like this, whether the knees are bent, arms are bent, if you're walking, you're probably walking in the sagittal plane. The torso would be leaning forward, and you can, of course, lean slightly back if you want, supporting your uh, back with your hands. Anything here is on this plane, and the head would drop and come back. And remember, when we bring the head back, you want to support the head because the head weighs about eight pounds and you don't want to be just letting it hang here. So any movement that we're doing here would be on the sagittal plane. And I want to show you this. You can be doing all of these on a stool if you need to. And that way you can swing your leg forward and back. You can swing your arms. You can come forward and back if you want to practice this on a stool instead of standing. Just because the block is here at the waist doesn't mean it has to stay there. Imagine it up around your neck or even down by your feet. It's still on the horizontal plane. The transverse plane, just think about it being horizontal to the floor. And so we can move our arms like this and we're moving them parallel to the floor, horizontal to the floor, together, bent, however you want to swing them, pulling back like an archer, that would be horizontal to the floor. Now, with the legs, how would we do that? Well, you can swing your legs around so that the foot is more or less horizontal to the floor. It stays approximately the same uh, distance off of the floor. And of course, on your stool, you could also do that by just swinging the foot around a little bit and practicing it that way. I really like this one exercise for Parkinson's where you touch here, circle it around and touch behind and kick something while you're doing it. But this is an exercise that is showing you doing an exercise using the transverse plane. Now, if you want to do the torso, you think, how am I going to lay down and do that? This is what they call using the transverse plane for the uh, torso. So you're just twisting with it. And the same thing with the head. You're just turning from side to side to side. Now, 
I've offered you some ideas as to why this is important when you're trying to build your own exercise program or you just want to go through a bunch of stretches or something. If you think in terms of planes, you're probably going to get a, a good range of motion and you're going to be able to do your reaches on your horizontal plane. That way you've got that range of motion. Um, you can go along this plane, good range of motion. And then you can go on this plane for a range of motion. See how you're hitting everything all the way that your, your body actually wants to move. So that way you can build your own program. Or if you're just doing something around the house, be thinking about those planes. Now we're going to do the challenge. Before we begin the challenge, I'd like you to read through all of these theories and then you're going to get an idea of why we're doing what we're doing. You saw all of those things as an intro, Neuro, neuroplasticity and synapses and neural pathways and all of that, and it's really, really true. There's a lot of scientific gobbledygook out there for us to use, but for our purposes, we're just going to have some fun with it and actually do what all of that stuff is talking about. Any time that we can challenge the brain when there is a neurological disorder, we're going to create new synapse, new pathways, and it challenges that brain and it makes it work better. If the brain works better, it communicates better with the body. Parkinson's, dystonia, all of those neurological things can be helped by practicing this until you get it right. Then, when you go to do something normal, just a standard activity, it will seem so much easier that you'll be able to do it better. Okay, we're going to use the frontal plane first. Now, what we're going to do is I'd like you to take your dominant hand, you know, the one that you write with. Most people, it's their right hand. And just do this back and forth at a moderate pace with the elbow bent. Take your other arm now and go very slowly with it. And you don't have to be perfect along that plane. It's just that we're thinking that the plane is right here for us and that way it keeps you um, having some parameters, I guess. It makes it actually easier. Now, both arms start with your dominant hand going at the moderate pace. Bring the other hand up at the slower pace. You ought to try this and talk at the same time. Not as easy as you might think. You can feel your brain trying to work that one. Try it with the non-dominant hand. Moderate pace. I feel like I have the vapors here. Okay, now we'll go over and take the dominant hand at a slower pace. Are we ready? Start with the quick one. Add the slow one. It's so difficult, but it gets easier as you go along. Now we're going to use this plane, the sagittal plane, forward and back, and I'm going to have you just take your hands and doing them at about this, so we're not raising them really high or really low. I just want you to be able to have them in front. Take your dominant hand and with a more or less straight arm, bring it up and down. 
And now, slowly on the other one, like I said, more or less straight. Drop it down and begin on your dominant side. Add the slow hand on the non-dominant side. Kind of fun once you get used to it. You can do it. Come on, keep trying. Keep trying. Okay, don't want to get too tired here. Okay, this time the other hand goes quickly. Practice it. All right, slow on the dominant side. Get ready for your challenge. Okay, nice and quick. And here we go. I'm having a hard time with this one. I don't want to stop, and yet my body wants to stop for me. You can see that I'm going to have to practice this one a lot more, but I wanted to share it with you before I was perfect. You, well, you know, everybody thinks they're perfect. Anyway, now we have one more plane, and this one's a little bit different. This time we're going to use the hands together, and we're going to be turning the head. Using the transverse plane, turning, we're going to turn, and don't turn all the way, don't go like this, just turn slightly so that you're kind of looking out a little bit of an angle there. Turning, and stop. Take your hands and bring them across slowly. Now you can do them this way, you can do them hands up, whatever is comfortable for you. But you're going to go slowly with the hands. Let's practice this one more time. Back and forth, moderate pace, stop, very slow, and if I goof up, you do get to lack. Seems sensible. All right, quickly, well, moderately with the head, and add your hands. I find that closing my eyes works the best with this one. How was that for a challenge? Did you get your brain going on that one? Let's try it one more time. Eyes open or closed. Head back and forth. Arms up. And go. And I'm very, very jerky with my head and hands on this one. And if you are too, that makes me feel better. But I would really like to hear it if somebody has done this right off the bat and done it perfectly. So put a reply on the video there. Now, I'm going to have all of these written down for you on my Facebook page, and it will be under the same name of uh, Shared Info and Moving in Planes Challenge.